Welcome to module 3 of the Open Educational Resources developed as part of a group assignment submitted to IIT Bombay by team number 2 from Import Simple 1093. This video is released under Creative Commons Attribution 4 license. You are free to use, distribute, modify, including for commercial purpose, provided you acknowledge the source. I, Professor Smith, will cover this module number 3. Module number 3 we will cover transistor AC model, that to specifically small signal and useful for only low frequency for a not for the high frequency that you have to keep it in mind till now you have gone through module 2 modules where in module 1 we have covered transistor biasing and in module 2 we covered dc analysis specifically for the voltage divider bias let's go through the learning objective of this video after going through this video the learner should be at least able to understand what is ac model what is the need of it and justify the presence of the components as well as able to draw the AC model of the GBJT when it operated at low frequency. Now, what is the need of AC model? All of you know that BJT is a active component. So, if you want to apply KVL, KCL, you can apply it only if there is a passive element. So, before you go for an AC analysis, you have to replace it by some model. And the model has to be based on the region in which your BJT operates. Now, this model should be such that it should indicate the behavior of the BJT in the region which it operates. And in our case, we want to operate the BJT in the active region because we want to use it as an amplifier. This all AC model can be derived from the input characteristic and output characteristic of BJT. So, let's go through the input characteristic and understand it. So, here we are introducing a new term AC emitter resistance RE dash. All of you know that. In the BJT, the base emitter junction is forward bias. So it's basically a simple forward bias diode. So we can represent it by some resistance. Now when I look from the emitter side, AC point of view, whatever resistance that you have because of that forward bias is nothing but AC emitter resistance. The small r for AC point, small e for the emitter and dash that is nothing but for specifying that it's not a physical resistance it's nothing but the resistance of the forward bias diode at the emitter junction now if you do the analysis and looking from the emitter okay you will get ve equal to minus i minus i in sense because i e i am looking inside and i is flowing outside but if you do ve is nothing but minus VBA. So, VB over IE, that is nothing but your RE dash. Now, let us understand with respect to the input characteristic. This is the input characteristic where IB is in microampere. It is like a forward bias diode only because the base emitter junction is forward bias. Now, I want to understand RE dash in terms of capital IE. So, instead of plotting this, I am convert, I am uh, mapping this IB in terms of IB into IE, where we know that IC is equal to beta IB since I am using in active region and IE is equal to approximately as IC. So, so now you can see that this I have written in just in milliampere the same. Now, suppose you operate at this operating, this is your operating point Q1. In one case, case 2, you are operating the transistor at Q2. So, the transistor which is operated at K1 is, op is having your IE DC current smaller compared to the transistor which is being operated at Q2. Now, slope also if you find at this point, the slope at Q2 is going to be greater than slope at Q1. So, that is definite slope is nothing but the ratio of delta IE upon delta VB. The inverse of that is nothing but delta VB over delta IE. That's nothing but small VB over small IE. Small indicates the AC quantity and capital indicates the DC quantity. So you can say that your RE2 is going to be less than RE1. So basically your RE dash is inversely proportional to IE. This is you can understand logically from the graph. Otherwise, with the help of some equations from solid state physics, people have proved that RE dash is nothing but given as VT over capital I, where capital I is nothing but the DC emitter current 
and V T is volt equivalent temperature given as K T by Q, where K is Boltzmann constant, T temperature in degree Kelvin, Q charge in Kelvin. At room temperature, if you find it out, it will turn around to be around around 25 millivolt or 26 millivolt over I C. So now it's clear that at the input side it's a resistance. Looking from the emitter side, it's a resistance between base and emitter, and the resistance value is R E dash. Now the remaining part is between the collector. So for the collector case, let us see the output characteristics. Now for the output characteristic, if you see, if you operate it is in active region, your for a given value of V C, your I C changes with respect to I B, but for a given value of I B, your I C is almost constant. So you can say that B J T can be used as a current control constant current source or when operated in active region and hence you can replace this you can view this dependency of ic on ib as equal to beta ib as a constant current generator so the model now it might be clear to you it will be look it will looks like this see the resistance re dash indicating the forward bias diode but this resistance changes with respect to capital i inversely proportional and it is acting as a constant current this is basically developed from the ebers small model this looks like a t that's why it is also known as t model or re dash model you literature call it as a t model but our aim is to analyze the ce amplifier now if you and then go for the c amplifier then this emitter terminal leg re dash will come in picture at the input loop equation as well as output loop equation so to make the analysis simple i want to segregate separate this input side and output side and nothing common in between so you replace this resistor by one res by some component at the input side and some component at the output side such a way that its behavioral doesn't change so if you talk about the output side it's nothing but between collector and emitter so there is a current source which offers very high impedance and then there is a re dash resistor so which will definitely going to be very high value so at the output side there will be only current source let us see for the input side for input side what we can do is look from the base and looking from the base input side from the base is the input so input current will be ib so i apply the kvl so if i apply the kvl i will get vb equal to ie into re dash but input is ib and this when we look from the base part we call that resistance as r pi which will be clear after the model we draw r pi equal to vb upon ib but vb is nothing but ie into re dash ie is approximately same as I C and I C is beta R D. So you turn around that your right pi is nothing but beta R D. So is looking from here the forward bias diode offers a resistance of beta R D. So your pi model will look like uh, between base and emitter beta R D and between this beta I B. So if you see now if you apply if you use this model for the C E configuration it becomes very simple. because see your emitter is common that will be grounded so it will be like one loop input loop on this side and output loop on this side and it becomes very simple for the analysis so these are the main two model that are available t model or you say re dash model pi model that is nothing but r pi model it looks like a pi that's why it is known as pi model this is basically generally preferred when you go for common base because when you go for common base this will be grounded this side will be input this will be so there will be no nothing no common element between input and output the same way this is preferred for the ce configuration you can use this also for ce configuration and this also for the cv configuration but generally to make the analysis simple this is what they do so for analysis after ever analysis you identify the transistor in which region it operates you replace by its model and then carry out ac analysis to determine the mainly four parameters that is voltage gain of an amplifier current gain of the amplifier input impedance of the amplifier and output impedance 
this which will be covered by one of our team member pinkesh patel in the next module these are the this is the acknowledgement part or the schematic dry, diagram has been drawn in student evolution multi sim ppt has been made these are the books we have referred we have not included any assignment for many questions mcq for this this is a theoretical concept thank you